Welcome back, everybody, to lesson four of this VFR flight training series by FS Academy. Today, we are doing a local flight from one airfield to another. We're going to join the circuit and then land. Uh, we were back in the Robin, which, as we know from the last time we flew it, I had some issues. So hopefully it goes better this time. So let's get started. <laughs> Join us in the Robin as we're backtracking runway 32 at Thames on the New Zealand's North Island. Keep taxiing towards the end of the runway. Sure, give me control. We're going to conduct a full VFR flight completely in uncontrolled Class G airspace. To begin, we'll depart Thames via the circuit and start heading southeast. Roger that. Now slow to a walking pace and make a 180 turn to line up. So he's Align the yourself grass. in the center of the grass runway and come to a stop. Okay, and about right here. There's no ATC here at Thames, so we'll broadcast what we're doing on the local traffic frequency. Thames traffic, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha taking off runway 32, Thames. Now set full power and take off from runway 32. Okay, full power set. All right, rudder. Raise the nose to the climb attitude. Positive right. Gear up. Oh, oops, wrong aircraft. Hold the climb attitude and fly straight ahead initially. We'll join a left circuit after takeoff. Right rudder to keep the ball centered. Roger. Trying to get about 80 knots, which is right there, I think. Three hundred feet above airfield level, flaps up. Flaps up. Passing 500 feet, so make a left turn to the crosswind leg, climbing to 1,000 feet circuit altitude. Level off at 1,000 feet and turn left onto downwind, heading 140. Alright, here's the fun part, leveling off and turning. Rolling out, 140. Thames traffic, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha downwind runway 32, leaving southbound Thames. Alright, now on the downwind fun part, leg try of to the trim. circuit, we're going to carry on straight ahead and begin our local flight and climb higher once we've left the circuit area. Okay. Now 
we've left the circuit to the south, climb straight ahead to 2,500 feet on heading 140. Keep flying heading 140. Sorry, drifted. Let's Keeping get... the Waihu River on your left, we're aiming for Te Aroha, which is the town just at the base of the tallest part of the ridge line up ahead. and maintain 2,500 feet, accelerate to cruising speed of about 100 knots. Okay, will do. All right, let's level off. Oh, no, 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 no. Set power to hold 100 knots and make sure you're trimmed out. That's what I'm trying to do. Lean the mixture slightly if you haven't already to make the engine's fuel to air ratio more efficient. You may need to reduce power and re trim afterwards. Well, you haven't exactly taught me how to do this, so. We'll do that. I assume that's leaning it. This countryside looks nice. Oh. There's some clouds baked into the uh, ortho down there, it looks like. Oops. We're now flying visually in uncontrolled airspace. At this altitude, we don't need to account for any cruising level restrictions, and we can simply remain clear of cloud. We can see the river starting to bend away to the left, Mm -hmm. Set a heading of 150, pointing us between the dark marshland we see on the right and the high ground on the left. Okay, I'm already at 150. I flew this lesson the other night, but I guess it was during the uh, Microsoft outage. And I was noticing how ugly the scenery was. I'm like, this can't be ugly over here in this part of the world. And I didn't realize at the time there was an outage going on. And once I found out and I waited, I kind of scrapped the video because it was just so ugly. And so I had, I redid it now with uh, everything working. I'm glad I did because it was ugly. Far, make sure to keep a good look out the whole time. We're in uncontrolled airspace below 3,000 feet, so anyone can be flying around in any direction and at any altitude, even without a radio. If we were to climb above 3,000 feet, we'd need to fly at a VFR cruising level. Heading east, we'd go for an odd altitude plus 500 feet, such as 3,500 feet. Traffic heading west would be at an even altitude, plus 500, giving us some separation. Above 3,000 feet, we also need to have a minimum cloud separation of 1,500 meters laterally and 1,000 feet vertically. This is instead of simply staying out of the cloud and remaining in sight of the ground, as we're doing here at 2,500 feet. Just a little bit high. I'm going to try to slowly get that back down to 2,500 feet. If you look to the left, you'll see the town of Pyaroa, and just beyond that, a gap in the ridge line mm -hmm. called the Waihi Gap. Watch for traffic going in or out of there, and continue heading 150. I don't see traffic. Let's get back on course to 150.
keeping the trim pretty good this time. Hope it stays that way. Still can't quite nail it though to say it's zero. See the highest peak on the left side? That's Tiaraha Town just below it. Take yep, us I overhead to Tiaraha. When flying VFR, there are minimum altitudes that come into play. Unless we're taking off or landing, the rules are that we can't get any lower than 500 feet above the ground or any person, vehicle, building, etc. That minimum becomes 1,000 feet if crossing a built-up area such as a town like Tearaha. For really big towns and cities, another rule comes into play which is the glide clear rule. This means that we must always be able to glide beyond any built up area and be able to land at a safe place in the event of an emergency, such as an engine failure. It also applies once we start heading out over water. You have to be able to glide back to solid ground for a landing, which limits how far off the coast we can go in this kind of aircraft. That makes sense. To carry on ahead towards Tiaraha before okay. heading towards our next airfield, Matter Matter. We've reached Tiaraha, so now carry on ahead for a short distance, keeping the Ridgeline to your left. Looks like a nice sized town. As we get closer to the ridge line, become mindful of turbulence. If the wind is strong and is coming from the other side of a ridge, you can find severe downdrafts, so always give high ground some extra space when downwind of it. Okay, nothing yet. Feels fine. at about one o'clock see the long straight road turn to heading 160 and follow the road keeping it on your left mm, i do not but he said go 160 so we'll do that and then we'll see if we can find the road See that road. I'm not sure if that's what he's talking about or not. Follow this straight road and it'll take us towards Matamata Airfield. The road is an example of a line feature. Line features such as roads and railways are great for following. But if crossing over them, be mindful that they don't give precise lateral guidance, unless there's a standout feature, such as a junction or a town. When following a line feature, keep it on your left side, as this makes it easier to see from your seat. Traffic following the line in the other direction should also be doing this, giving you some separation. Alright. I will follow this road to my left, I guess that's it. following kinks off to the left, but we're going to keep heading 160 as it takes us straight towards Matamata. Start descending to 1,700 feet. All right, we'll power back and um, I know you didn't say anything, but I think I have to uh, go full rich. I think that's what it's called. So 1,700 feet.
We're going to enter the circuit at Matter Matter. Although it's uncontrolled, we still use our radio to broadcast our position and intentions and listen for other traffic. Okay. To enter an uncontrolled circuit, we use the standard overhead join, which has us arrive overhead the airfield at circuit altitude plus 500 feet, looking down onto the airfield to observe the runways and look for any other aircraft. The live side of a circuit is where the circuit pattern is. The dead side is the other side of the runway, which is where we do any descending down to circuit altitude. We make a radio call before we reach the overhead to give advance notice to any other aircraft in the circuit. Matter Matter traffic, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha, 1,700 feet from the north for overhead join at Matter Matter. Come on. Just try to tr level off at 17. Keep a heading of 160 to track the straight road. Thought you said the straight road turned off. Ah, uh, come on. Follow it. There we go. See if I can see this airfield. Keep a heading of 160 to track the straight road. Oh my gosh, okay, 160. Looking just left of the nose, you can begin to pick out the wide grass runway of Matter Matter with the white buildings to the western end. Oh, we're going to use it? runway 28, making a right hand circuit for training. Maintain 1,700 feet oh, and I turn left slightly to fly over the runway 28 threshold, about heading 130. That's it right out there. And I'm starting to dive bomb. Oh my lord. Keep 1,700 feet for now. I'm trying. When nearing the runway 28 threshold, start a right hand turn and I'll call overhead. Matter Matter traffic, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha overhead for runway 28. Matter Matter. There it is right there. Holy crap. Now we're crossing the runway, we're entering the dead side. Start descending to circuit altitude, 1,200 feet, and turn right to cross over the upwind end of runway 28, near the white buildings. Matter, matter, Foxtrot, Sierra Alpha, descending dead side 28, matter, matter. Keep the turn going towards heading 010 and aim to cross the upwind end at circuit altitude, 1,200 feet. I'm trying. Not quite. Cut back speed some more. Okay, here's 200. Lift up. Not that far. Now we're crossing the upwind end. We should be 1,200 feet and about heading 010 as we enter the live side. Yeah, we're close. Make the right turn onto right downwind, heading 100, maintaining 1,200. Matter, matter, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha, right downwind, 28 to land, matter, matter. 
down wind checks, brakes, pressures and release, undercarriage uh -huh. fixed, mixtures full rich, fuel on and sufficient, instrumentations, T's and P's are in the green and cabin secure. Notice uh -huh. how it's a little harder to see on a right hand circuit. It's a little this harder This is why they're typically everything. made to the left. Downwind for 28 is heading 100. Yeah, I know. Runway looks about 45 degrees over your right shoulder, so make your right descending turn onto base, slowing to 80 knots. I'm gonna give it just a second here. Alright, now we'll do our base. Uh, get some flaps because we're in the white. Once inside the white airspeed band, take first stage of flap and hold 80 knots on base. I'm trying. Matamata's runway 28 is grass and unmarked. It also has unusual dimensions, being about triple the width of a normal runway at 137 meters wide. Make Ooh. your own turn onto final and judge your approach with this in mind. All right, we're going to final. So many things happening. Pull back on power because I'm still too fast. Now we're going to go landing flaps. Matamata, Foxtrot Sierra Alpha, final 28 for full stop. Matamata. Bring the speed back to about 60 knots and take landing flap. We'll make a full stop landing. As this grass runway is unmarked, choose an aiming point roughly where you'd expect to find the runway numbers and keep that locked in your windscreen. The wideness of this runway will give the illusion of being low, so try to account for this. Power back and flare attitude, look to the far end. All right, down. Yeah, that was a big pain in the butt. All right, let's come to a stop. Great, we've flown from airfield Ooh. to airfield with some navigation in between and made an overhead join to join a right-hand circuit. Vacate the runway or continue to fly circuits if you wish. Well, all right, that's it. Less than four out of the way. It got rough there towards the end, but I, I feel I did a little bit better than the last time. I don't know. We'll see. Well, we'll see how it goes because we still got um, several more lessons to go. So anyways, thanks for uh, continuing on this journey with me and I'll see you next time.